Because my colony is currently approaching another peak in breeding activity, there are all stages of its life cycle present. That is a good opportunity to show them all in comparison, along with some added older material. These stages are egg, larva, pupa and adult. All of them can be spotted in this older snapshot. But let's have a more recent and less chaotic look at them one at a time. Egg. These are some freshly laid eggs. As you can see, the sponge cloth is a well accepted substrate. The eggs start soft and fragile, but fertilized eggs harden within a few days. When they are older, egg development becomes apparent until the actual unborn larva can be seen through the shell. At normal room temperature, hatching will mostly occur after a little over a month. Some eggs of a clutch are often stragglers and hatch much later though. Newly hatched larvae start in a whitish creamy color. It takes a few hours to darken. Young larva. The larva's primary purpose is to feed and grow and fatten. These are the first four larval stages in comparison. The larvae are specialized hunters of gastropods and are equipped with several adaptations to this lifestyle. Like a venomous bite and an organ that helps to grab onto snail shells and to brush off slime residue. After each mold, they start in a lighter tone and turn into the dark color scheme just like after birth. Mature lava. The growth from newly hatched larva to the last larval stage is prominent, especially in females, which are usually larger. Mature larva that are about to pupate may focus less on feeding and enter a bout of diurnal wandering. Pupa Depending on food availability and temperature, development may vary in time. In my breeding colony, it most often takes about half a year to go from L1 larva to pupa. But I also had cases where this took either twice the time or as little as 16 weeks. I like to separate larvae that are about to pupate. And then I sort the ensuing pupae into male and female. Because from this stage on, sex determination is easy and foolproof. Ah, here we have one fresh male and female pupa each.
Note the arched, stiff posture of the soon-to-be pupae larvae. Those fresh pupae are still a bit wriggly. Once again, the pupae start more whitish and gain more pigmentation as they mature. Especially at the eyes pronotum and, in males, the wings. The male pupa on top is the youngest, the rightmost one is the oldest. Male pupae have much larger eyes and wing structures than their female counterparts. At normal room temperature, it takes one to two weeks for the pupae to hatch. Since they are poorly pigmented anyway, the females do not change much in color after they cast off the thin chrysalis. The males, however, need a few hours for their wings to unfold and the wing cases to darken. This segues into the adult. To avoid uncontrolled mating, I usually separate the sexes from pupa on. First, let's get some females. And now add some males. Again, older and younger pupae, easy to distinguish by eye color. Okay, I better give them some privacy now. The male has fully developed wings and big eyes, while the female gives rise to the worm part in glowworm. It has only rudimentary wing stumps and small eyes. Size, coloration and wing stump shape may vary somewhat. The female is of course famous for its prominent glowing behavior to attract mates. But in fact all the life stages are capable of glowing. More about that in another video. However, the female does develop two bands of glow organs in addition to the smaller two dots inherited from the larval stage. The male utilizes his big eyes to spot the glow of the females. The capability of flight aids the search, at least in nature. Oh, well, we mustn't judge too harsh. That was his first try. You know, the key is to actually beat those wings, not just jump off. Better. Perfect! If females and males find each other and mate successfully, the females lay eggs and the cycle is closed and starts anew. In nature, this usually happens in summer. My little colony of Sardinian glowworms is of course less restrained by seasons and will often produce two generations per year.